Okay, from this point, we can export our 3D models to Studio via Collada. Um, the first thing you need to do, or the first thing that I typically do, is remove all of the images within my uh, DCC apps uh, images list. Uh, and the reason why I do this is I don't want Collada to remember which images were associated with my model. So that way, when I bring in my Collada file into Studio, just the model comes in and no placeholders for any images uh, so that way it just keeps it clean nice and simple so I'm just going to go ahead and select these images and it's nice to save a copy of your file before you do this so in case you need to go back to a version with all of your images in your inventory you, you still have that file information so uh, then I'm going to go to my model tab and unhide all the geometry in my scene and Collada only accepts triangulated mesh at this time so make sure that your preferences in whatever DCC app you happen to be using accepts uh, or actually saves triangles as triangles on export most most DCC tools like 3D Studio Max or Maya will do this. Um, however, in Modo, I have to make sure that this option is checked so that when I export my model, it'll export correctly and come into Studio without any problems. So I actually need to select all of the geometry in my scene. And in Modo, if I press, press the Shift-T buttons on my keyboard, it will triangulate my, me my mesh for me. And from this point, I can export as a Collada file format. So reference cluster.die will work just fine. I already saved a version out, so I won't do it this time. And in Studio, I'm going to start a new project. And from here, we can get started building the uh, speedometer and get it animating. All right, so now we're ready to import the assets into our project. So our 3D mesh is ready to go. Um, I've removed all references to images within Modo, so I won't get any, any kind of errors upon import. Um, keep in mind that, and this is very important uh, for some um, newer users, just because I removed the references to my texture maps in Modo, or whatever DCC tool you happen to be using, that does not mean that your UV information has disappeared. Your UV information is associated with your your mesh, your materials and uh, your mesh geometry has that UV information stored into it. So just simply removing the images from my file really does nothing. Um, so just keep that in mind. So I need to bring in my assets in the project into the project library. And to do that, I'm going to right click and choose import resource and I'm going to choose reference cluster.dae that was the Collada file I just exported out of Modo and from here if we open up this group within the project library we can see all of the objects that we were uh, looking through in Modo and assigning texture maps to and checking out the UV coordinates on so these are all here ready to go and now I need to think about how this speedometer gauge needs to be constructed in Studio. And to, uh, to, to do that, I need to think about what objects are going to be in constant motion and what objects are merely background items that are going to um, sit behind my, my actual moving parts of my gauge. Uh, and what I mean by that is all my reference cluster, if I go ahead and choose Edit Master up in the top left and if I drag in this reference cluster you'll see that I've got a round bezel object. It's kind of hard to see in the viewport so I'm going to move the camera just a little closer. There we go. So I've got this round bezel geometry here. This is actually going to sit behind my actual moving, moving gauge. 
And because of that, I want that 3D object to have progressive anti-aliasing turned on on the layer that I'm going to create for it. So that way, during runtime, it looks beautifully rendered um, on the target device because it's not moving, it's going to be a static piece. Um, it might move initially, like on an intro slide, uh, but on the landing slide it'll remain static and be a nice uh, background setting for my actual gauge. So I need, this, I need to separate this from my speedometer cluster. So I'm going to do that by going to my basic objects palette and selecting the layer um, object here, clicking and dragging that into my scene. And there we go. And I'm adding everything into my master slide view because if I don't do that, and if I leave the slide master slide view, and if I create a new slide by right-clicking and choosing New Slide, um, each additional slide I create will not feature this reference cluster object or this new layer that, layer that I added. That's if I didn't add these to the master slide view. Um, since I did add these objects to the master slide view, any new slide that I create, like this, uh, will feature these objects. So that's something to, to also keep in mind. All right, so I'm going to rename this top layer to Layer Gauges. And this bottom layer I'm going to rename Layer 3D Components. Let's go ahead and capitalize the G up here for consistency. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to also introduce a group by going to master slide view, clicking on the group object, and dragging that into the 3D components layer. And the reason I'm doing this uh, is to uh, have a, another control for animation when I drag in this uh, round bezel object into that group. So I'm going to go ahead and actually do that now. Just go ahead and drag that right into that group, and let's call the group round bezel and that's it I think we're good to go all right so we've got our group set up and we've got them renamed and just real quickly I want to demonstrate uh, why I put all of these objects in a group um, the first thing is organization it's nice when you start adding assets to your scene uh, when you've only got one asset like this reference cluster uh, speedometer it's really not that big of a deal uh, which reminds me, I'm going to go ahead and just call this speedometer. And I'm going to add another group in here called gauges. So now if I move this speedometer group into my gauges group, this leaves it open for future additions to my presentation. So what I mean by that is since I've got a gauges group, I can have a speedometer, I can import a tachometer, drag that into this group, or if I've got a gear select, gear selector or gear selection component, I can add that to either this group or create a new group called um, maybe fuel and temp meters or gauges. So groups really help with organization, for one thing, um, but groups also help with animation. And so right now, if you look at the, the scene camera view, uh, we see my uh, X and Y axis. That's my pivot. That's the pivot of this group. And I can adjust this pivot by adjusting the X, Y, and Z positions of the pivot object on the inspector palette on this group. Um, and if I want this pivot to be above this object, if I want the hinge, if you can think of it kind of like a door, if I want the hinge to be up here so that when I animate the group's rotation, I want that rotation to center around that new pivot location. Um, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, the, the only concept you need to really remember is whatever direction I, I move this pivot, either in X, Y, or Z, I need to copy that value to um, the Y position up here in the uh, position property. So right now I'm at 28 on my Y pivot. So up here on the position, I'm going to type in 28 and it places the pivot right there. If I do 50, and then 50 up here, 
and then I accidentally put negative 6 on x, so I'm going to clear that out to 0. The pivot is now way up here off screen. If I go to my 3D perspective view and just rotate around, we see that the pivot is now up here. And so now that lets me animate about that pivot. So if I wanted to animate this gauge coming down, kind of like a, a hatch or a lid, you know, that's one way to do it. Just an example, I mean, we don't have to uh, keep it up there. In fact, I'm going to put it back to zero. Let's go back to my scene camera view. So uh, import, groups are important, not only for organization, but if you need to set up animations, they are very useful for controlling multiple objects within a scene all at once. So if I have you know, numerous objects underneath a group, I can animate the opacity of just this one group, one object, to, uh, to affect everything within the, uh, the group here. So if I wanted all of these objects to disappear over time, it's, it's a, you know, really a smart move to just put them in a group and animate just the group instead of everything underneath that group. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, from this point, we can add materials, or I'm sorry, not materials, texture maps to our materials. And after we do that, we can adjust uh, the properties of these texture maps to fit exactly the way we want them to. So that's going to take a little bit of work and a little bit of fine tuning. And then after that point, we can actually get into the animation process and demonstrate some techniques uh, like animating the U and V positions of these texture maps to achieve the effects that we want. So let's go ahead and do that next.